They stirred up a hornet's nest with Petrus Romanus. The final pope is here. Turned up the heat with the book Exo Vaticana, and now they are on the third of a trilogy. Welcome to Skywatch TV, a daily video update. I'm Derek Gilbert. Our guest is uh, Tom Horn. You, you and uh, Chris Putnam, your, your co-author on those books, uh, Petrus Romanus and Exo Vaticana, uh, really stirred some controversy by suggesting that the Vatican knows a little more about, uh, or thinks it knows a little more about what may be coming at Earth from outer space than they are letting on. Uh, your new work, On the Path of the Immortals, still researching it right now. What direction are you going with this uh, third of the trilogy? Well, we just can't keep ourselves from getting into trouble. So, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, Petrus Romanus was a groundbreaking work. It was started out, it was just going to be kind of an analysis of a 900-year-old Catholic prophecy, mm -hmm. you know, not advocating that it was a real prophecy or not, but, you know, it was coming to an end. It was historic. Uh, we had evidence that there were those among the Catholic hierarchy, among the Curia that put stock in it. And maybe they were electing popes or not electing them based on if they could be seen as a fulfillment hmm. of that prophecy. So that's all we were going to do, right? We got involved in that. And, uh, but, but one of the things that we did was we predicted a year in advance that Pope Benedict was going to step down, mm -hmm. and he did. And in fact, we, we even named the month that he was going to step down. It turns out we were accurate. Well, when that happened, then all of a sudden the book went crazy. We were getting phone calls from all over the world, including from Rome. Mm -hmm. We had uh, some of the Catholic media in Rome wanted us to fly over Rome to do shows, and we were warned not to go. Uh, I don't know if that was just, um, you know, conspiratorial thinking, but we didn't go. Mm -hmm. But what happened then was we would be doing uh, shows. We did your program. We were doing shows with Steve Quayle. And uh, when they were call-in shows, people were calling in and they were saying, yeah, but what do you make of all this stuff the Vatican's been saying recently about aliens and alien life and right. some of their theology and we would baptize aliens and they are our brothers and mm -hmm. people were curious about that. So we decided that we were gonna follow up the book Petrus Romanus. We were able to set up a tour. Uh, we actually went to uh, Mount Graham mm -hmm. in Arizona, went up on the top of the mountain, met with the Vatican representative, the, the Jesuit that was there that day, climbed all over their advanced telescope, went to the radio telescope. There's actually three telescopes on the top of Mount Graham in southeastern Arizona. And then we went to the large binocular telescope in which sets the notorious Lucifer yes, device, yes. right? Uh, and so that seemed to like, you know, instead of answering the questions we went there to gather, it, it raised a thousand more questions because all the way from people saying, what? The Vatican has an observatory on the top of a mountain in Arizona. What are they doing over there? Exactly. All the way from that, all the way to what is the Lucifer device and why are they using it? Which took us back to Malachi Martin when Art Bell asked him years ago, why is the Vatican heavily invested in the study of deep space on the top of a mountain in Arizona? And he said, it's because they know what is approaching the earth mm -hmm. and that it will be of the utmost importance in coming years. Well, anyway, so we wrote a 600 page investigative book called Exo Vaticana mm -hmm. that became our best selling uh, book. But now we're on a third book and to answer your question, why? Because when we, when we first went to Mount Graham, uh, I had assumed that the reason that the Apache Indian and other indigenous tribes had filed a federal lawsuit actually to try to stop the Vatican and NASA from building that observatory on the top of that mountain, I had assumed it was because it was sacred ground to them in the sense mm -hmm. that their mothers and fathers for you know hundreds of years had lived on the mountain and died on the mountain and therefore it's like a graveyard or something. It's holy ground to them. And we found out that that might be the case, but that was not the case. The big issue to them was that Mount Graham is one of four of the most holiest mountains to the indigenous people in the United States of America. Hmm. And as far as the, the American Indians are concerned, one of four of the holiest mountains in the world. Well, then we wanted to know why. Why is it a holy mountain? And to put it in our modern lingo, it's because it is for them what we would call a stargate. Hmm. A, a specific geographical location where things can move in and out of our three-dimensional reality. 
In fact, we could talk about their creation myth and the role that these mountains played. And that's why they didn't want the Vatican to go up there. So, because we learned that after we wrote the book, Exo Vaticana, it put us right back in a position where, okay, we've got to finish this investigation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how much time we've got, but you know, Chris has been investigating uh, hot spots, locations. I'm actually leaving on Monday to go to the Navajo Nation where we'll be meeting with some of the elders of the tribe there. Uh, it, 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 maybe we're just digging another giant hole with a thousand <laughs> more questions. But we have actually filmed some phenomenal stuff. I mean, Chris's, his, his theology actually uh, got upgraded. He, he never believed in things like orbs. Right, he thought right. it was all just a big joke. Tricks of the lens. Tricks lens, of the lens, lens until lens. they went there and specifically set up two cameras so that you wouldn't get a trick of the lens and had an orb come down, hover over their head, watch them flit about, and then just literally dissipate and um, film from two different angles. Both cameras. Both cameras. Wow. Followed by an enormous triangular ship that then came through the air very slow, very much like the Phoenix Lights type ship, which right, they okay. also filmed. And we'll be providing that film on a future program on Skywatch uh, TV. Okay. Now, the... Uh the idea of portals, uh, the only example we really see of something like this in the Bible is the account in Genesis where Jacob uh, falls asleep and uh, sees the ladder with the angels climbing up to heaven, climbing down again. Uh, is the, what, what sort of scriptural evidence, I mean, is, the, is that it or is there other, are, are there other uh, hints, clues, uh, passages in the Bible that support the idea that there are places on earth that literally serve as gateways between this world and the spiritual realm? Yeah, I mean, I think actually there are numerous examples. I gave a presentation at Strategic Perspectives not long ago where I mentioned seven or eight of these out of the Bible. Uh, and, you know, sometimes I might be uncomfortable using the term portal. Yeah. But if you specifically are talking about a high or sacred location, mm -hmm. then you can see Moses going up one of the mountains, specifically Mount Sinai, where he is to meet with God. When Jesus returns, it says his feet will touch the top of the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. and he will descend. Uh, the extra biblical book of Enoch, which of course is still in some versions of the Bible, talks about the watchers who mm -hmm. descended onto the top of Mount Hermon, Mount Hermon, and that from Hermon they come down into the Valley of the Plain. And interestingly, later on, Nimrod, this big rascal who shakes his fist in the face of God, goes specifically into the plains of Shinar and builds a tower. And what does it, what does it say? They, they intended to build a tower whose top mm -hmm. would reach into, and the Hebrew there is Shamayim, the dwelling place of God and or watcher level angels. And God himself says mm -hmm. they will accomplish what they have imagined to do. And so he comes down and confuses their language. Yeah. Now, in our modern lingo, people would say he went there to build a stargate, mm -hmm. a portal, uh, some kind of angelic technology that we can barely comprehend, but something that God said they will accomplish what they have imagined to do. They're going to pierce the veil. So in terms of the, the American Indians, uh, they have a long history, and they commonly will simply refer to them as sky people, uh, but they're not all good. We, in our language, would talk about this as angels, mm -hmm. fallen angels, they also describe coming through those portals these owl-like men that look very much like alien greys, and they, their shaman call them bad medicine. They're yes. to be avoided. Now, it's very interesting that you mentioned that because there's a, uh, a, a little type of figurine. It's a class uh, from Mesopotamia, ancient mm -hmm. Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. that, that look very much like the character from um, uh, Close Encounters. No, right. not Close Encounters, uh, E.T., the Steven Spielberg movie with the really big eyes. And these little figurines look just like that. They're called eye idols. And it sounds like if you're talking about a, a, a creature with oversized eyes, owl people, that this may have been a global phenomenon. Well, yeah. In fact, you know, uh, I, saw, I mentioned on Monday I'm headed for the Navajo Nation. One of the Navajo uh, elders, he's one of 10 in their hierarchy, is a 92-year-old uh, native, but he is a convert to Christianity. And get this, by the way, he was a code talker in oh. World War II. So I'm really looking forward to visiting with him. But he is going to tell us their, their creation myth in the Navajo language and then also in the English language. And we'll be providing that on film. We'll probably put it in the Navajo language with the subtitles 
uh, below it. But in a, in a quick nutshell, um, their legend says that in the time before time, a giant silvery disc came down over the top of the mountain, hmm. and in it sat a bearded man. He was the creator, and he began creating all life on earth. But soon after, another man comes through the portal. But he's not really a man. They said he's a dragon disguising himself as a man, and he is a deceiver, and he mm -hmm. begins deceiving all the peoples of the world. Soon after that, giants start coming through the portal, and they start sweeping across all the Arizona basin, you know. It's the book of uh, Genesis. It's the book of Genesis. Well, in fact, they cry out to the great God, and he sends a flood <laughs> that wipes out all the giants and sweeps their bones under the, the hills. Of course, then this goes into what? The Smithsonian? cover up because the, you know, the Mexican invaders and then the English and they come here and they start going to all these sacred mounds, digging up these giants and mm -hmm. hiding the bones. But yeah, so uh, that's, so the, the, the title of this third book, because I know that today we're not doing a show on it, we're really just kind of wetting people's appetite to right. know what Chris Putnam and I are up to. The title of the book is On the Path of the Immortals. Uh, and uh, Chris is doing some fabulous research, some of the most cutting edge research right now in quantum physics and theoretical physics. What's happening at CERN? Mm -hmm. CERN's own physicists are, are telling us what they're looking for. They're looking for parallel realities and they want to open a doorway mm -hmm. through which they say we may send something or something may come through. Well, that's- What could possibly go wrong with that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the results of this. On the Path of the Immortals, this will result in a book, but also a four-part investigative yeah. series on Skywatch TV. Yeah, actually, we've already shot a lot of the film, experts from around the world talking about everything from aliens and UFOs, but from a biblical world view. But the film that we shot, we specifically went to see if what we were hearing from some of the uh, Native in, uh, Americans was true, but we didn't anticipate we were actually going to catch on film stuff that they tell us is coming through uh, these portals, but we did. So there's a documentary film that's coming, but there's going to be a four part mm. uh, Skywatch television. Uh, special investigative report. That's another thing about Skywatch TV. We're going to do this several times per year where we take a whole month and do a special investigative report, kind of a 2020-like yeah. uh, approach, but from a Christian point of view. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it. On the Path of the Immortals, Tom Horn and Chris Putnam back at work. Keep watching for it here on Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. thinking, but we didn't go. Mm -hmm. But what happened then was we would be doing uh, shows. We did your program. We were doing shows with Steve Quayle. And uh, when they were call-in shows, people were calling in and they were saying, yeah, but what do you make of all this stuff the Vatican's been saying recently about aliens and alien life and right. some of their theology, and we would baptize aliens, and they are our brothers. And mm -hmm. people were curious about that. So we decided that we were going to follow up the book Petrus Romanus. We were able to set up a tour. Uh, we actually went to uh, Mount Graham mm -hmm. in Arizona, went up on the top of the mountain, met with the Vatican representative, the, the Jesuit that was there that day, climbed all over their advanced telescope, went to the radio telescope. There's actually three telescopes on the top of Mount Graham in southeastern Arizona. And then we went to the large binocular telescope in which sets the notorious Lucifer yes, device, yes. right? Uh, and so that seemed to like, you know, instead of answering the questions we went there to gather, it, it raised a thousand more questions because all the way from people saying, what? The Vatican has an observatory on the top. Uh, your new work, On the Path of the Immortals, still researching it right now, 
What direction are you going with this uh, third of the trilogy? Well, we just can't keep ourselves from getting into trouble. So, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, Petrus Romanus was a groundbreaking work. It was started out, it was just going to be kind of an analysis of a 900-year-old Catholic prophecy, mm -hmm. you know, not advocating that it was a real prophecy or not, but, you know, it was coming to an end. It was historic. Uh, we had evidence that there were those among the Catholic hierarchy, among the Curia that put stock in it. Maybe they were electing popes or not electing them based on if they could be seen as a fulfillment hmm. of that prophecy. So that's all we were going to do, right? We got involved in that. And, uh, but, but one of the things that we did was we predicted a year in advance that Pope Benedict was going to step down, mm -hmm. and he did. And in fact, we, we even named the month that he was going to step down. It turns out we were accurate. Well, when that happened, then all of a sudden the book went crazy. We were getting phone calls from all over the world, including from Rome. Mm -hmm. We had uh, some of the Catholic media in Rome wanted us to fly over to Rome to do shows, and we were warned not to go. Uh, I don't know if that was just, um, you know, conspiracy. They stirred up a hornet's nest with Petrus Romanus, the final pope is here, turned up the heat with the book Exo Vaticana, and now they are on the third of a trilogy. Welcome to Skywatch TV, a daily video update. I'm Derek Gilbert. Our guest is uh, Tom Horn. You, uh, you and uh, Chris Putnam, your, your co-author on those books, uh, Petrus Romanus and Exo Vaticana, uh, really stirred some controversy by suggesting that the Vatican knows a little more about... Uh, or thinks it knows a little more about what may be coming at Earth from outer space than they are letting 